The year is roughly 700 BC. The Romans are taking the world by storm, literally. They prove themselves to be one of the most powerful conquering armies in history, taking control of most of the known civilized world. But they have also contributed much to our modern world. They invented aqueducts to quickly move water from one location to another. They paved roads, allowing for easier and safer travel. The Romans are also claimed to have developed stadiums, plumbing, and new methods of science and art. However, known to relatively few are their contributions to modern computing and digital security. Consider this scenario. The powerful Roman army is marching into new territory to conquer. For safety, information sharing, and even strategy, they must communicate to the rest of the army, who may be miles away. How should they do this? This is 700 BC. Phone and email won't do. They could write a letter, but what if the enemy captured the messenger? Well, there goes any strategy, information sharing, or safety. For the security of the message, they could send an entire battalion, but that would compromise the speed and ease of communication, some defining factors in war. Well, in writings that date back to 680 to 645 BC, Archelaus tells us of a device that encrypted communication. Around 700 years later, Plutarch tells of a device called the scale that simplified, toughened, and complicated encryption. This device brought about the birth of encryption devices while paving the way for modern data security. The device was called the SCADL, one of the first known cryptographic devices. Methods of encryption are known to have existed before the SCADL, however, they were only methods to hide information, as opposed to a device that automated and eased the process and this device was incredibly simple. It involved really only a stick. It could be wooden or really anything round. And a simple strip of parchment or maybe leather on which to write the message. The sender and receiver would both need a wooden stick of around the same diameter. The diameter of the stick would be essentially what we call an encryption key today. An encryption key is the method by which the message is coded or encrypted or decoded, decrypted. It is the method, only by that method can the message be read or coded. Therefore, the encryption key is securely stored. When the message was transferred, they would have securely transported the message separated from that wooden stick. If an enemy wrapped the message around a differently sized stick, then the message would have been more difficult to read. Therefore, the diameter of the stick on which the method was encrypted would have been safely stored and kept secret. The scale worked as so. The sender would take their strip of parchment or leather and wrap it around that wooden object. They would then write their message lengthwise across the parchment each letter would be on its own strip of the parchment. Then that parchment or leather would be removed from the wooden pole. In this orientation, the message would appear as a jumbled collection of letters. If someone intercepted the message and wrapped it around a differently sized pole, it would be much harder to clearly read the message. At the receiving end, the recipient would take a stick of the same diameter, the same size, and wrap that leather or parchment around it. Then they could quickly, easily read the message. In and of itself, the SCADL is not a real safe or secure way to transport messages. The only thing that truly keeps the message secure is the diameter of that pole. And really, with that jumble of letters, it's not real hard to decipher or rearrange the letters to read the message. However, using the SCADL, combined with other methods of encryption invented in Egypt, Mesopotamia, and parts of Judea, the scale could add another extra layer of security and more enhanced security. So generally, the, the scale itself wasn't used by itself, but 
only in conjunction with other security and encryption methods. As with the Sumerian Abacus discussed last week, we see the role of need in computing history. The Romans had a need to communicate securely. They had a need to communicate without their enemies learning of their whereabouts. Need has always driven the invention and development of new technology. It was important last week with the Abacus, and it will be important throughout our journey through the world of computing history. This device is also an example of the part war plays in the development of new technology. We would all prefer peace, and if someone said they enjoyed war, well, we'd probably send them to some kind of doctor. We would all prefer peace. Peace is the goal. However, in a war of sin, that is simply not possible. War causes destruction, destroys lives and communities, and the physical landscape of Earth. War is bad. However, the part war plays in the advancement of technology is profound. Just wait until we reach World War I and World War II, two eras of human history where the use and development of new technology simply exploded. It was truly an exciting time, at least for technology. Need and war have shaped technology as we know it. It has shaped that iPhone that is in your hand. War and need are fundamental concepts we must remember in our journey through technology. We live in a time where the importance of data security and private communication is well understood. Millions of lives have been forever changed by data breaches, identity theft, or other illegal actions. Facebook and many large social media companies have been attacked for the way they handle the data they are entrusted with. Large corporations, many large corporations, are now finding themselves at the sharp end of consumer and governmental pressure to keep our data secure. These debates plague our news cycles and even many of our minds. But at the center of these debates is one thing, data encryption and data security. Now, yes, data encryption looks much different today than it did in 700 BC. But the scale, as simple as it was, paved the way for better, more secure, and more sophisticated methods of data security and encryption. It's this simple device that has given us more complex devices. Before the car could be invented, the wheel had to be created. Well, there it is, guys. I thank you for tuning in to watch our second major milestone in the history of computing, the SCADL. It's a simple device, but its impact on our world is no less profound. It's important that we study these devices. They have paved the way for modern technology. Well, next week, we will be looking into and learning about a very influential, famous, and advanced piece of early computing history. Let me know if you can figure out what it is. As always, I invite you guys to reach out and connect with me in the comments below or on social media. You can follow me on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. All of the links are in the description down below. And as always, just a reminder, each week I'll be posting a blog version of the video on my webpage, which again, you can find in the description down below. Well. That's all I got for this week, guys. I hope you'll join me next Saturday as we launch into our third major milestone of computing history. See you then. Bye.